with that i'd now like to recognize my colleague from michigan a member of the intelligence committee who thoroughly recognizes and has met with these people in iraq and afghanistan and understands their contributions he's as confused as i am as to why they do not want to recognize their contributions my colleague from michigan mr rogers how, how many minutes do you recognize? i'd like to yield six minutes to my colleague Gentleman is recognized for six minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Breaking member, just have to get used to that. This is a pretty important, really, debate. And I have to tell you, I am a little confused by my friend's resolution. It is a very complex problem. And when you look at the problem in Iraq today, you have really two distinct problems. One is the ethno-sectarian violence that is self-sustaining now in Baghdad. It was a precursor to al-Qaeda uh, al activity uh, to, to actually create conflict between the Sunnis and the Shias. And unfortunately, it's raised to a level that it's self-sustaining. And you have an al-Qaeda uh, Sunni insurgency happening west of Baghdad that certainly warrants our attention. And the troops there have called for reinforcements. They said, give us reinforcements. We need them badly. Al-Qaeda is settling in to make safe haven here. And part of the plan, or the surge, in fact, says that we're going to reinforce those soldiers who are fighting al-Qaeda, and they've asked to be reinforced. The simplicity of the resolution concerns me greatly. I'm not in favor of sending American troops, the other 16,000, into the streets of Baghdad to intervene in the sectarian violence. I'm not. I am in favor of supporting the soldiers who've asked and should receive reinforcements fighting al-Qaeda in the West. This resolution really makes no difference in that fight. It makes no difference in the complexities and how we win and get our soldiers home. This resolution does not bring one soldier home. This resolution does not make one soldier safer. This resolution does not bring to justice one terrorist. This resolution offers not one alternative. I think we've made some devastating mistakes in Iraq the extent of our debathification and what that's meant for us winning the peace, the dismissal wholesale of military units and what that's meant to our ability to sustain peace, the shuttering of uh, nearly 300 state-owned enterprises and what that's done for unemployment and not allowing us to sustain the peace, our failure of a na to focus our national power on solving some of these basic problems, we, in fact, and this is up to us, have allowed politics to creep onto the field of battle. And that's created some very real problems for us and our soldiers. We've seen, because of that politics that's crept into the battlefield in Iraq and what that's meant, it's created some inefficiencies. I, the other day, have counted up 12 different groups or agencies or departments that have some ability to provide reconstruction money in Iraq. Twelve. That is a problem. Some conflicting policies. Our soldiers will tell you that they feel that they're handcuffed, or at least have one hand cuffed behind their back because of the politics that have crept in that change the way they're allowed to engage the enemy as they see them and protect themselves. Politics crept onto the battlefield. The turf battles between the State Department and DOD, I wish they didn't exist, we all know they do. We took a very large bureaucratic civilian organization and set it down in the middle of Baghdad and wondered why it has some inefficiencies. But these are things that we can change. We can do that. And my mother told me that if you're going to tell me what I'm doing wrong, you better be prepared to tell me how to do it right. The resolution before us today says nothing of an alternative. We have soldiers who are getting up every day and engaging themselves in fight for liberty and defense and going after al-Qaeda targets in the West and trying to find al-Qaeda elements locating and spurring on this self-sustaining ethno-sectarian violence. It does nothing to tell them that we A, support them, and B, we'll give them all the tools and make the changes that we know we can to make it possible for them to come home to their families soon. This afternoon, I'm going to do that. I'm introducing a resolution that's fairly comprehensive that will allow us to focus our national power without sending 20,000 troops to Iraq. It'll help target the uh, unemployment that we know is fueling terrorism in Iraq today. 
clear rules of engagement for our troops, calling for the repatriation of the one to two million Iraqis who are middle class Iraqis, they're doctors and lawyers and engineers and their teachers who fled Iraq in this turmoil to engage our allies to get them back and invest them in the future of Iraq. What disturbs me most, Mr. Speaker, about this resolution is that its clear purpose is to divide those of us in this chamber. As I said earlier, I don't support the surge in Iraq that targets sectarian violence in Baghdad. I think that must have an Iraqi face for that to be successful. And I think we can provide logistics and command and control, and we can provide combat air support and special operations support to make them successful as they move through Iraq. I think we can do that. But this resolution does nothing to bring members together to solve this problem. If you win this vote today and this passes, we will have solved not one problem for one soldier who gets up this morning hoping and praying that he can accomplish his mission and come home to his family, not one. It truly seeks to find the differences of those of us in this chamber on how we move forward in Iraq. There is nothing constructive in that. Nothing constructive in that. There's a young soldier that I met, visited him down in Brooks Army Medical Center. He was, had asked at his lev, one additional minute, sir. Fire. Gentlemen, one additional minute. Gentleman is recognized for one additional minute. He asked that his leg be amputated so that he could have full range of motion so he could pass the physical training test for the United States Army and go back to Iraq. And he was going through all that very painful process of getting it fitted and, and going through the physical training and trying to rehabilitate himself. And as I got ready to leave, I said, is there anything that I can do for you as a member of Congress? And he turned and said, yes, sir, there is. Just don't give up on us. Now, if this soldier can believe in this mission, and he can get up every day and fight through the sweat and the pain and the anguish of a lost limb so that he can get back in the business, if he can roll up his pant leg every day and fit that prosthesis, isn't there a way and shouldn't we do better and roll up our sleeves to work together to find a solution? We got in this together, we must get out of it together. We need to stop the division that this resolution brings to this House and start working together. Our soldiers deserve better, America deserves better, the Time future of this country and safety and security deserve better. I yield back my time.